as you, you are as you ought to be. We tend to connect that to identity yeah. or whether we're beautiful or not. But the <laughs> being as you ought to be in the Bible has nothing to do with whether you're beautiful or um, what was the other thing that we connected with? Oh, your identity. It has nothing to do with your identity or your beauty. Your identity and your beauty was always as it ought to be. Sure. That's not the part that wasn't as it ought to be. Right. What wasn't as it ought to be is that we were in bondage to the serpent system of sin and death. Yes. That's the part that wasn't as it ought to be. Yeah. We were created to have faith dwell in our heart and not the spirit of works. Right. So what wasn't as it ought to be was the belief system we adopted. But we were always beautiful to God. We always were his children when he looked at us. That doesn't change. And so when we talk about a person being as they ought to be, we're not saying, well, they weren't beautiful and now they become beautiful. We're not saying they weren't children and now they become children. What we're saying is that they've now seen themselves in the face of Jesus and they believe. That's what it means to be as you ought to be. God created you to know yourself the way he's always known you, Jesus is the manifestation of how God has always known man. And when you can know yourself as you've always been known by God, you are as you ought to be. Right? But not in the sense of identity or any of that stuff. Right. Which we don't consider how jacked up our theology was. I hate to break it to everybody. There was never a time when Jesus wasn't the beloved son of God. Right. Ever. He always was. He always was. Well, he hung on the cross with all sin and all death. Right, right, right. So did the sin and the death now make him not the beloved son of God? No. no. Always, then always. how do we say that the sin and death made us not the beloved children of God? Right. How do we say that? <laughs> we distort the truth. We can't say that if we look at the word made flesh. Right. We can't say it. Our whole gospel has gotten completely jacked up. We've made it about our identity being not as it ought to be. We've made it about us being ugly to God, and that's why we weren't as we ought to be. And then we preach the gospel of those of the things that had to change. But it says that the sons of God are those that are led by the Spirit. And then it describes what that means. It means that they're children of God, but now they have the Spirit of God confirming with their spirit that they are the children of God. It's not that they become children. It's that we were always children. But being led by the Spirit means that you now have the Spirit of God dwelling in you, confirming to your spirit that you are. <laughs> Meaning the declaration out of your heart is, Abba. Right. That's what it means to be a son. Yes. It means not just that you're a child, but you know you're a child. Now you become a son. And I don't mean become like you weren't. I mean appear. Mm -hmm. Because that's what that word becomes in the Bible means. It doesn't speak of something that isn't becoming something that it wasn't. Right. It speaks of appearing. And I, I say this a lot. I should preach a message about it. But we don't consider what the spirit of faith is. God calls forth those things that don't appear as what they are, what they are, in order that they can find strength from him calling them what they are to appear as what uh -huh. they are. Right. So when God called Abraham the father of many oh, nations, many nations, was Abraham the father of many nations yet? No. No. He, he became, at, he appeared after, didn't he? Right, right. But God called him the father of many nations before. Yeah. Yep. See, that's how God does it with us. We are his children. We're not trying to become his children, but we don't, we're not satisfied with just having been cut from the rock. We want to appear in history as who and what he's called us. <laughs> Meaning we want to experience immortality and glory, the glory, the life, the immortality we were created for. Right. Right? Yeah. So God has come and called all people his children. Yes. Right? Yes. So that they could believe on the spirit of the son. And then that spirit could dwell in their heart and confirm to their spirit. I am the child. Then their heart cries out, Abba. Right. Just like Jesus' heart cried out, Abba. Yes. Right? And yes. they're led by the Spirit to cry out to Abba instead of crying out to their own works. Right. And that's what Romans 8 is talking about. Um, and so it, it, it jacks the whole thing up. We, we, we preach identity, but then we preach it from the foundation that we make it impossible for a person to believe the truth about who they are. Because we tell them that yeah. you weren't right. a child of God. You were the rejected of God. You weren't cut from the rock. 
But now, at age 30 or 40 or so, after you have 30 or 40 years of being a degenerate loser, That's right. rejected by God, now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, you're different. Now you're beautiful. Right. Guess what? That person will look in the mirror and see the same person they saw the first 30 years of their life, and they'll struggle to believe they'll anything different. the same different. things that they've always done. That's right. Yes. That's right. The new creation is that there's now a human being that found life by faith. Yes. And now because there's a human being that found life by faith, there's a whole, every other human being can now also live by faith. Right. That's a new creation. We're not bound by Adam now. We now have the platform restored where we can believe unto the spirit dwelling in us. That's the new creation. Amen. What are you saying so 